Good morning, folks. As you can see, we've got continued solar flaring and CME production from the incoming sunspots. Please know it's another quick hit show because at the end of today's program, we've tacked on a critical lesson about solar terrestrial physics. The sunspots are indeed still relatively active on approach to facing Earth here. We'll need eyes on spaceweathernews.com for details throughout the day. But right now, let's come to the lithosphere, where a mud volcano takes the top story of the last 24 hours. Eruption was only seven minutes long, but the mud volcano unleashed heavy amounts of material and flames 150 meters above the crater. Meanwhile, in India, Bhutan, Nepal, the hail turned deadly. There are reports varying between 8 and 13 dead from the enormous and relentless storm of ice. Seen a lot more hail deaths already this year than expected. Let's quickly run through the top viewer locations where not much has changed from yesterday's looks. Snowstorm still rolling across the northern states. Meanwhile, in Europe, it is that same system driving moisture northward off the Mediterranean. And the situation down under remains that coastal threat at the northeast due to the strong low over the water. Quickly sharing that indeed atmospheric aerosols are carriers of current in the global electric circuit, including from the pre-seismic processes that initially gave away the electroquake truth. That one's for Counselor. The link between lightning and space weather takes another notch on its belt. Here, approximately 11-year modulation was apparent, roughly matching the sunspot cycle. Lastly, folks, an interesting paper on changes to TSI data, that's solar irradiance, in such a way that would amplify the disparity in energy between grand solar maxima and the grand minima like the Maunder period. This is a great recognition of the drastic changes, but still likely falls a bit short. In about 10 seconds, you've got the major lesson on one of the biggest climate change fails of them all, total solar irradiance. Website members, I'll see you at the podcast in a few hours. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. Total Solar Irradiance, TSI, the dominant historical gauge for solar climate effect. While we know that thanks to 400 solar forcing papers since 2011 that the breadth of solar forcing in the future will be more appropriately applied, capped off with Mathis et al. 2017, which we covered earlier this year. But perhaps you are wondering why it matters or how you can get your head around why it's so vital that this not remain the gauge of solar forcing on our climate. In case you didn't yet catch the timeline at the bottom, we're looking at the last two months of total solar irradiance data, and the thing that sticks out is that a few weeks ago we had a large drop in TSI, almost equivalent to the change expected over the entire 11-year sunspot cycle due to the higher and lower periods of sunspots. What is interesting is that while TSI does go up during sunspot maximum, we see a dramatic drop during the strongest space weather events. That dip there indeed occurred during the major solar flare uptick of September 2017. If that seems contradictory to you and to the notion of potential Earth climate effects, you are right. But despite the fact that this is not uncommon, in fact, many surges in solar activity result in a drop in TSI, it is still considered the basis for saying the sun has no effect on climate change. Well, if the ultraviolet energy drops in favor of X-ray and charged particle bombardment, that seems like something that should be more heavily weighed towards climate effect, not hidden by the method we choose to judge the sun. Well, that is what we are talking about. That's what is important about 400 solar forcing papers, and especially Mathis et al. 2017. The feedbacks, oscillation controls, charged particle, and geoelectric effects are now indisputable, and when we transition away from a strictly TSI model, it can only serve to benefit the climate models. One should not expect this to erase the human effects in those models, but... Perhaps the failure of current models to predict global temperatures without the benefit of record El Ninos will be reduced with better accounting of all the different factors involved in our complex climate system.